Save your children. It is your job to save and to protect your children. This was dropped into my spirit today, and I want to share it with you all. I'm going to share with you Proverbs chapter 13 and 22. I'm going to share the first portion of, of it, okay? It says, Proverbs 13 and 22, it says, A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children. A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children. In order for a, it, the key word is here, is a good man, because not every man is able to leave an inheritance for his children's children. And now some, and, and when we say man here, it's not just man, even though the Bible is probably talking about a man, all right? Because if you look in the word of God, prayer, disciplines, going off to battle, caring for the family, raising the children up, this was the duty of the fathers, okay? You find that the men were in the synagogues praying. They were in, they weren't before the Lord to pray. You saw the men going off to war. You saw the men going off to battle to claim the land or going off to deal with matters that whenever there were matters that that came among the children of Israel you saw the men coming together you saw the princes coming together to handle matters very rarely do you read about anything where the women were up front handling these things because this was a perfect order of things but this video is not about that so here is talking about a man a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. And now you may find people that they may not have a lot of money. Life and things may have happened that they may not have material wealth or wish, uh, or riches. But I also believe it's not necessarily just not only talking about that because someone that may not have a lot of money was able to still leave an inheritance in character, in behavior, in the love, in the responsibilities that he or she bestowed onto their children, raising them right, caring for them, providing meals for them, protecting them. Even though there was not a lot of money, whatever he can work for and provide, he gave. You see, wealth is not necessarily money. Every human being has wealth. The, the, the actual definition of wealth is whatever money you have left over after you have paid all your bills. This is your wealth. So if you only have $100 left, that's your wealth. If you have $5,000 left after you've paid your bills, that is your wealth. What you have in the bank, maybe, you know, some savings, that is your wealth. So wealth is not always that you're super rich. But what you have. So you may find a man, he's working. That person is working for whatever, however they can work, right? And even though they don't have a lot, they're responsible. They put a little bit away. They do what they can. They work hard to get their kids some shoes. And if they can't get them shoes, they do what they can to put something in the bottom of the shoe, you see. And so in doing this and, and putting what they need to put into that child, then they continue to give wealth. They continue that whatever they instilled in their children, it will go to the children's children. And of course, if you have a lot of wealth, then it is the same thing. I really get excited about the word, so I need to slow down. In this scripture, even though I just gave you that definition, the wealth here we're talking about is behavior. You, as parents, have a responsibility to protect your children. You raise them in the love and the admonition of God. It is your job to protect your kids. It is your job to keep them from the counsel of the ungodly. To um, ensure that they're not sitting in the seat of the scornful. Now you know as your children get older, they're going to make their own decisions. And there's nothing you can do about that. And some of you may have made choices based on what you thought was best at the moment. But it's in my spirit to tell you this, to protect your children. Some of you, you grew up in abusive homes. 
Some of you, you grew up around toxic family. Some of you, you have a toxic father. You have a toxic mother. You have toxic siblings. You have toxic relatives. And somewhere in your mind, you feel as a Christian and as a believer, oh, I need to take my kids around these people because after all, that's Graham Graham. After all, that's Paul Paul. After all, this is their uncles and their aunties. This ideally is how it should be. But what do you do when you have a toxic mother? What happens when you have a toxic father? What happens when you have a mother that continues to disrespect you? Now, let me tell you something. This is a huge difference. Sometimes your parent, they're just being, they're being wise parents. They're just talking to you. And then you get an attitude and you decide you're going to keep the grandkids from them because you don't want counsel. You don't want wise counsel. That is not what I'm talking about. But you may have a parent that hurts you, that has done that throughout your childhood, done that throughout your adulthood. They continue to do these things where they're disrespecting you and playing games with you and they won't stop doing it. And so now here's this thing where you feel like you need to take the kids around them. And I'm going to I'm going to tell you, no, you're not supposed to take your kids around people that acts ungodly. You're not supposed to take people, take your children around people that is scornful. They're scornful of you. They're scornful of your God. No. Your children should not be in a place to witness your mother, father, brother, siblings disrespecting and cursing you out and throwing up your past before them because I'm here to tell you, you're damaging them. And so you'll find what will happen if you are not careful. You're going to find that that grandparents, grandparents, siblings will either now start to offset those same toxic behaviors onto your children by way of their own children because what happens is your children and their children are normally just fine but now they see their their dad or mom may be disrespecting their mom their dad saying stuff about them and it causes this bit of friction between them they're trying to really stay close but maybe that brother will say oh well your son your daughter don't play sports like mine why is your daughter so skinny she looked like that old that crazy man you married look how you messed up her jeans look how you messed up her makeup look how he don't play no sports because you went and made a baby with that soft dude over there you understand that and so your child is hearing that and then they're hearing that and now the cousins are looking at each other sideways they don't know how to act because of the poisons that's going on but you took them around that it's really hard to undo words and seeds that's been planted but nothing is impossible with God if you're in a stage right now where you feel that, oh, you need to take them over to see Graham Graham, the family reunion is going on. You don't want them to be without a family. I'm here to tell you something. They have a family. This is a part of your stewardship. Now, you have to always make sure that you do not have unforgiveness and you're hating them and you're doing things out of malice. You are hurting your heart and it's normal for you to feel hurt. It's normal for you to feel like you don't want to be around them. But you have to take those feelings to the Lord so he can truly work on your heart. Truly work on it so that seeds of resentment and unforgiveness and bitterness do not, do not begin to take root. But I'm going back to Proverbs chapter 13 and 22, where it says, A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children. Sometimes you'll find parents, sometimes you may find siblings, relatives, that they are not good. They don't want to be good. They're good when they feel like it. They're good only if you don't upset them. They are good depending on who you are. So the opposite of good is what? Evil. So you have a person that operates in evil. What is evil? Any works of the flesh that you will find in Galatians chapter five. So you feel that they're walking in malice, wrath, seditions, unforgiveness, emulation, variance. They do all these things. And when you have a parent that's been alive longer than you, they have been around to hear the word of the, God, the Lord and convictions of the Lord longer than you. They gave birth to you and they still continue to behave in this toxic manner towards you. And so now they're, they're acting, they're behaving themselves in an evil way because they're walking in one or more of the works of the flesh.
you see and so it doesn't matter if it's one thing it's the work of the flesh it's evil whoever walks in the flesh shall not inherit the kingdom of god so they continue to do these things so you see they have a choice to hear god to listen to god and sometimes even if you're not saved there's people who are not saved that know how to behave themselves and treat their children right but they've they've been doing this way before you were born and so you're born and now their heart is hard and now they begin to infuse the stuff inside of you so you see now what they did they're not doing good they're doing evil and so they infuse that evil in their seed in you the things that you're experiencing and they did it to your siblings and other people so now the siblings learn how to do it to one another and to you but in every family there's usually a remnant there's usually a person that really does not want to go this way they don't want to do that and they're normally the one that everyone turns around and they realize this one is nicer than us so they start to do certain things to you because you're the one that's always going to come back and say that you're sorry you're the one that's always going to come back and try to make amend. You have empathy. You have loyalty. But these are the gifts that God has placed in you. This is the inheritance that God has placed in you. So you can now give it to your seed and their seed. You must protect it. So what happens is they add that to you. And now you grow up. Think of all the years they've had from the time they before you were born what they were doing. After you were born and you grew up into an adult they're still doing it and they're getting worse and now you have your seed and they're trying to tell you oh you need to bring that baby around me but you realize now what they're trying to do is to bring on that evil seed that in evil that evil inheritance they're trying to bring it to your seed because now they behave unseemly in front of your kids towards you. They say whatever they feel like saying to you. You will find sometimes that they might be nice to your kids, but you realize that they're turning your children against you. They want your children to become their allies. So they act nicely to your children. And oh, I don't understand why he or she's this way towards me. And suddenly you realize your children are changing because now instead of a good person that's 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 um leaving an inheritance you have an evil person an evil person that is now trying to leave uh trying to leave that nasty seed of 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 uh of division and placing it within your children and then you may find that grandparent they may not even, when they're mad at you, they don't want to have anything to do with your children. When they're mad at you, they don't care about anything anymore. And so the grandkids may still be trying to reach out to them, but you realize he, she don't care. They don't care because they're mad at you. They don't want to have nothing to do with them. They tell the kids not to come around, not to talk to them. You can't call them. They can't call their cousins. They can't call anybody because the seed has been planted. Your job is to protect your seed, to protect your children. Protecting them means not letting them go over there. Not allowing your children to be exposed to these toxic behaviors. Not allowing that seed where that parent can begin to bring that evil inheritance and bring it and put it in among your children. You see, there is a good man that will that will leave an that will leave an inheritance for his children's for his children to his children's children. And that's what you want. But then you have the opposite of a good man, which is an evil parent. That what they want to do is they try to pass on the generational curses. So it's not an inheritance. I said that. It's not an inheritance. They want to pass on that curse, the habits, the norms, and set it onto your children. And then it keeps going. Protect your children. That is a part of your responsibility as a parent. Stewardship. You have parents that feel like they have a God mentality. 
You may have children right now and you look at your children like they're objects. They're just things you made to wash the dishes and do the stuff and wash the kids and, 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 and grease your scalp or whatever else you have them doing. When they work, you just expect them to just give to you. You're like a big fat piggy bank. They Anything they give you, you're not teaching them how to save. You want to tell them how you did for them and they need to give you the little bit of $200 they have and help to pay big bills. Okay, so then what happens, guys, when you when you when you do this, okay, you are actually you're doing these things to your children based on what's happened to you and you're passing on a curse in your behavior. But you'll find that your child may not be able to defend themselves or say anything to you right now because they're young and they have to take whatever. But you'll find one or two things is going to happen. They become hurt and just get dark or they're actually very, there's something in them. That child they have an inheritance within them. They have a seed in them of, of empathy and love. And God is going to protect them. And what's going to happen is he will remove them from you so they can continue a lineage where they can put good seed in them. And they're not around the tares and they're not around stony ground and they're not around thorns and thistles of others, regardless of if you share the same DNA. My brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you, your job as a parent is so big. Too often people think, oh, you just laid down, made the child. And then you think, oh, now I have some little helpers. Now I have people that I can boss around because displacement is there. The things that your parents may have done, the toxic relationships you had, you try to do it to them. But I'm here to tell you, he's raising them up. And if you don't stop, you're going to lose them because he's not going and allow you to continue on because you continue that toxic behavior on when they have their seed because you think that you can still disrespect them you see and then the kids are going to see that and then you start to be nice to their grandkids and say little things jokingly I don't know what to do with your daddy he used to you say little things oh, I don't know your mama this and that no don't allow it remove your children from this environment. They may now be at an age where they're older. There's nothing you can do about it other than pray, pray, pray. But when you have small kids, when you have little children, and it is in your power, you are not obligated to send them over there. You are not able to send them into the counsel of the ungodly. You should not be having them sitting with those who are scornful. You should not have them going into places where they devise mischief and evil because that's grandma, that's grandpa, that's your uncle, that's your cousin. Because I'm here to tell you, you're planting seeds. The job of a good man, the job of a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. And if that man is not good, that man is now evil. And the evil and the things that he or she or they continue to do, they're going to pass it on from generation to generation. And God is going to ask us about, he's going to ask us, where did you send your children? What did you allow? Now, granted, sometimes you can't help it because you may be with someone, you're not with them, and you share custody, and they have to go see whoever they have to see. They got to go to their mama's side of the family, their daddy's side of the family. You just pray. You, and If they're with you, most of the times you pray over your children and you send them where they need to go. But I'm here to tell you that when that is not the case, you are not obligated. Somebody is struggling. And this is going to be an answer to you. When you are, you want, because in your mind, you think this is the right thing to do. No, there's a difference between what's right and what's wise. What's the norm and what's wisdom. And you need to know the difference. This is your seed. This is your lineage. This is a soul. You need to look at your sons and your daughters and realize those are souls. That young lady, that little baby girl is a soul. That little boy, that young man is a soul. And I'm here to tell you that when you have the right, when they are little, when they are still in your home, stop sending them to places that is toxic, where they're getting all types of 
dark intel being planted in their spirit and there are things sometimes you're not even aware of that they're hearing and that they're seeing or that they're being asked about or that they're being told and they're conflicted in their spirit when they get around you because they're remembering what was said and they may even be told, oh, don't say anything to your mama. Don't tell your dad I said that. Don't tell this. Don't tell that. So now they're learning how to keep secrets from you. But the thing about it is you're sending them to these places. You're not obligated to send your children into the den of lions. You are not Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are not obligated to pass your children through the fire for anybody regardless because I'm here to tell you when they are comfortable committing treason against the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, every time they sin and do evil, it is, a, it is an indication. It is indicative of where their heart is with God. They will curse God. They will disobey God. They will do evil. They will speak evil. By their fruits, you know them. If they don't care about your God, why do you care that your children sit at their table for Thanksgiving? If they don't have reverence for your God, why do you have this reverence that I'm going to pass my children through the fire because I want them to have a family? I'm here to tell you when you put your children in the hands of God and your relationship in the hands of God, removing them from these individuals, removing them from the path of unrighteousness, removing them where people are planting seeds and they live and they consume one another. I'm here to tell you, God will honor you. God is going to take care of your fruit. God is going to take care of your seed because what you did, you look at it like, oh, I don't know. But what you're doing is you're protecting the seed that's within them. You are protecting that inheritance that's within them. And you are also protecting your inheritance. A lot of times when you keep being around these people, they are beating on you so much that you're going to end up like out. You keep going around these people, you're going to end up losing that precious oil that God has in you. And he gave it to you and he protected you all these years and he saved your soul and he brought you to this place so you can pour into your seed, into your family. This is who you pour into. The gifts that God has blessed your womb with, regardless of who is there and who is present, whether mother, father is there or not, you invest in them and you pour into them and you pour into them. You give an inheritance to them and to their seed. Don't you know that what you're doing now is for them and for their seed? And when you do that, they will pick up the baton and the Lord will begin to work in them. And what you put in the seed, the thing that you placed in them, they will be able to do that for the next generation and the next generation and the next generation. But if you're trying to follow the norms and say, oh, they got to go over to grand grams, toxic grand grams, rude grand grams, oh, papa who talks smack and all the relatives that's just gnashing on one another and they begin to disrespect you through your children before your children or with their children against your children, God is going to hold you accountable because this was your seed. This was your inheritance. This is what he gave you. Oh, I'm going to end here, my brothers and sisters. Every situation is different and every word is not for everyone. But when you hear this word, you will know who it's for. I can only give you the foundation of what God has given me. But the specifics for your walk and how God wants you to deal, you're going to have to deal with that. You're going to have to find that in your time with him. I know some of you like to email me and I'm not against that. But the things, there's certain basic things that I can give to you as I'm given by the Lord. But the specifics, my brothers and sisters, before you reach out to email me, I want you to go to God and seek him because he's going to talk to you and he's going to tell you what to do. But a lot of you, what it is, there's fear. Oh, I don't know. Because you still have this fantasy of a family. But you need to realize that he who does the, the will of your father is your family. If they disrespect your God, if they disrespect you, if they're walking in carnality, they don't care about him. So your concern needs to be for him and your seed. Let me go.